two years. That is most likely how long it will be from when the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was revealed at E3 2019 to when we will see it again. The February Nintendo Direct made it clear that the Zelda team is still not ready to show more of the game. But is this really the truth? Or is the Zelda team forced by Nintendo's corporate and marketing divisions to hold new footage back for marketing reasons? Say, as the system seller for a new Nintendo Switch Pro model, I think this could be the case. And after you have liked this video, and if you haven't already, subscribed, with notification bell on, I will go in depth why we will not see Breath of the Wild sequel again until the reveal of the long-rumored and data-mined at this point Nintendo Switch top model to supplement the basic and light lineup. The Triforce of Nintendo Switch. Basic, light and pro. When Zelda series producer Eiji Numa showed up close to the end of the first Nintendo Direct in over 500 days, it was the second time in half a year when he had to make a statement that he is unable to show any new footage or gameplay from the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Last time when he did this in September 2020, he stated that we'll see new footage soon and now with a guarantee that we'll see more of the game sometime in 2021. Very vague statements that seem to have been provided to him by Nintendo's corporate leadership in Kyoto. Since Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is most of all a massive marketing opportunity and also a marketing spoiler for Nintendo, who didn't want to take attention away from the reveal of Skyward Sword HD. A game and remake which features big graphical and performance updates, but most of all a much needed controller overhaul so that it can be played on the go and on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Naturally, the return of Breath of the Wild 2 with a new trailer or even a title reveal would completely overshadow this 10th anniversary game, much like the reveal of Breath of the Wild's sequel completely overshadowed Link's Awakening HD during the E3 2019 Nintendo Direct. Though I think there was far more to it than simply overshadowing the game that Nintendo was revealing in this Direct. A marketing strategy tied from E3 2021, which will by all means be digital all the way to the holiday season and likely far beyond. A system revision and a strategy that replicates much of the treatment Breath of the Wild got in 2016, where the game was only shown on the Wii U at E3 since Nintendo had nothing else on consoles to offer as the game was coming out on the same day as Nintendo's next system, the Nintendo Switch. Throughout 2016, after only showing a brief teaser with a release year in 2015 that just months later would be pushed to March 2017, Nintendo only showed the game running on the Wii U twice. E3 2019, since it was before the reveal of the Nintendo Switch, and after that during the Game Awards as they were saving the first live demonstration of the Switch for Jimmy Fallon and the Nintendo Switch presentation in January 2017. From that point onward we never saw the Wii U version again as Nintendo wanted to push Breath of the Wild as the Nintendo Switch system cell, along with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, obviously. Now in 2021, we're facing a similar, or actually even worse situation. Two years with absolutely nothing except brief statements from series producer Eiji Numa. when with Breath of the Wild, we between E3 2014 and E3 2016 had the 2014 Game Awards reveal of gameplay and the game map and the November 2015 teaser. With Breath of the Wild's sequel, we have absolutely nothing after its reveal trailer, or first look as Nintendo titled it. All of this along with Anuma's two statements in September 2020 and February 2021 point to one thing. Breath of the Wild's sequel, much like Breath of the Wild before it, is meant by Nintendo to be shown, bought and played on a specific Switch model. One they have not revealed, but which has been datamined from official Nintendo firmware. The codenames Orla and Calcium, also known as the long-rumored top model of the Nintendo Switch. The PS4 Pro to PS4 of Nintendo. An ultimate Switch, which has no exclusive games, but runs most Switch games better than the base model Nintendo Switch and the Lite. The graphical and performance difference could be significant, and thus be a big selling point for Nintendo in regards to where you want to play Breath of the Wild's sequel, aka the superior version of it with higher resolution, frame rate, and detail. This goes without saying, but people want to play the version that will be marketed to you, the best looking version of the game, and that is exactly how you turn Breath of the Wild 2 into Nintendo Switch Pro's first system seller. Much like Breath of the Wild with its portability on the Nintendo Switch was its great selling point. Thus, we have the following theory that may anger a lot of current Switch owners, but which makes too much financial sense for Nintendo to not go for it. Hold back new footage and the final title reveal of the sequel to Breath of the Wild until you reveal the true Switch Pro, aka codenames Orla and Calcio, most likely around E3 2021 or shortly after Skyward Sword HD is out. Here is why. 
and is fully psychological. After not seeing the game for two full years, we suddenly see the return of Breath of the Wild 2, looking more crisp than ever and running in 60 frames per second, just like Skyward Sword HD. Even so, this is not a surprise to anyone, since Nintendo a few minutes prior revealed the true names of Orla and Calcio. And now the choice is yours. Do you buy this top model Nintendo Switch, which also comes with a Breath of the Wild 2 themed system and bundle with the game, to play the best version of the game? The answer for many of us will most likely be yes. After all, we all want to play the ultimate version of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, and the first Zelda themed Switch system, and not only Joy-Cons, yeah, that is a massive selling point. Meanwhile, Nintendo doesn't abandon the base model and light Switch owners, as they get a similar experience to the one we all got in Breath of the Wild. Yes, I'm telling it straight now, it could cost us several hundreds of dollars to play the best version of Breath of the Wild 2. But when you think of it, that isn't any different from Sony players who got a better experience of Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4 Pro compared to PS4. Heck, the difference was even noticeable with Majora's Mask when played on the new Nintendo 3DS compared to the regular 3DS and 2DS. At the same time, with two codenames, it looks like Nintendo wants to offer an alternative if you already own a base model Nintendo Switch, the Calcio, a peripheral that might be only a dock that at least to some degree improves your TV experience. But for the ultimate docked and 1080p undocked experience, you will need the Ola. In other words, a platform within the top model Switch. With a combined hardware and software presentation, or Nintendo Direct at E3 or sometime after, possibly after Skyward Sword HD is out, it seems very likely that Nintendo are holding back Breath of the Wild's sequel until they can show it running at its prime on a revised Nintendo Switch model. One that if the rumors and data mines are confirmed, will not only offer the best Zelda, but later down the line also the best Splatoon 3, Metroid Prime 4, Monolith Soft's new IP and the next 3D Mario experiences. All titles that will not only convince players to buy the Nintendo Switch Pro, much like PS4 players bought PS4 Pro, but also give Nintendo the ultimate excuse. Namely extending the life cycle of the Nintendo Switch, which Nintendo must do no matter what. At least until 2024, and possibly even 2025, now that we know that Splatoon 3 is coming in 2022. The reason being the insane success of the Nintendo Switch, which has surpassed all of Nintendo's past consoles in less than 4 years on the market, and is likely to surpass the Wii with some margin by the time a successor replaces it. In other words, a success that will be near impossible to replicate, as Nintendo is only able to sell 100 plus million units of a particular system when it becomes a must-own gadget, both for hardcore and casual players. Breath of the Wild's sequel could as such be the crucial starting domino, or is being held hostage right now, that will ensure the success of a Switch Pro. And to not amputate this one, they will not show any more footage of the game until the reveal of Codename Orla and Calcio, and Zelda running on it. You know, captured on new Nintendo Switch Pro in the bottom of the screen. Since it depends on this title how many Nintendo Switch Pros there will be on the market when Splatoon 3, Metroid Prime 4, Monolith Soft's new IP and the next 3D Mario hits the Switch in the next few years. That is all that needs to be said. Most likely, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is being held back until it can be shown running at its best during a reveal of the most powerful Nintendo Switch model. This showcase will again generate pre-orders for this top model since we all want to play Zelda at its best. And this again caused record sales of this top model at launch and Nintendo a platform to extend the life of the Nintendo Switch Triforce of Systems to 2024 or even 2025. Though this strategy needs Zelda in 2021 or early in 2022, so holiday release is absolutely possible in 2021. But it and the game's title will not be revealed until we have a Switch Pro based on this theory. Since do you really think it was a coincidence? that we only saw games revealed until August 2021, and then one game that is coming out in 2022? I really don't think so. I think Nintendo is planning something big for the second half of 2021. Something that may include Zelda, and actually even more games. Because most of the games that we've seen so far are for the most part ports, remakes, and smaller first party titles. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and share it so more people understand why not the Zelda team, but likely Nintendo, are holding back new Breath of the Wild sequel footage. And if you're new, 
please press that subscribe button as we are pushing for 300,000 subscribers. Do not miss any more videos like this one, press that notification bell and again for all notifications. Finally, a big thanks goes to all our patreon.com slash commonwealth patrons and in particular our royal producer Charles Shash. And to all of you, please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.